All right. Live. We are live. <laughs> and this is our first time doing this dual screen live on Facebook. So bear with us. I think we're doing pretty well to start. So yeah. I'm here with Kiali'i Punli from uh, How's it? Oahu, Hawaii right now. So he's joining us live from there. And if you don't know who he is, which I'm sure most of you are already following him as, what's your Instagram name again? Mahalo uh, Kealii. <laughs> good one. And then, um, so he's a native Hawaiian body surfer. And many of you may know he's from Kahanalu, Hawaii, and Dafin and Ruka. And most recently, we just announced that he is sponsored by Slide 2. And obviously, we're so excited to have him on our team because not only is he an amazing body surfer, he's also just a really cool guy, very genuine. And that's the type of person we like to have on our team. So... <laughs> Welcome to the slide team, and I know people are really excited to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored. <laughs> yeah. So let's start first. I just, we were just talking before we went live about how does many people who aren't from Hawaii, um, like myself, I feel like I butcher it all the time, and I want to know how to say it correctly. And also, I want to know what does it mean? I'm sure it has a good meaning. So... Um, in Hawaiian, ke ali'i is broken in two parts. So there's ke, which is ke, and the rest, which is ali'i. Um, ali'i means chief or ro royalty or, or king. You can use it. There's many. That's one thing about Hawaiian names is one thing can mean so many things. Yeah, one word can mean a lot, you know. So yeah. ali'i, which is chief, or which I would just refer to as chief or king. Um, and you got ke, which is ke means ke is like, the, you know, so the chief, K early E. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's my name. <laughs> you had high aspirations for you then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell us first by um, a little bit about growing up in Hawaii and any unique memories you had while growing up online. <clears throat> um, growing up in Hawaii, um, it did. It depends because there's like a, a touristy way and there's like an actual like <laughs> deep roots way, you know. But where I come from is a mixture of both. So I was basically, I was, you know, like luckily enough to like experience both, you know, and not live in one. I was actually, you know, I would go to the, where I would mostly go to like live actually like straight off like Hawaiian, like off the land, literally. No grocery store you know, was um, in the Big Island, and which is uh, my first cousin's um, in-laws, and they're like roots, like deep Hawaiian, and I'm talking like we would like hunt pigs and like fish um, every day, like right up, right, like the land literally provides, you know, from Mauka to Makai, we call it, which is, Mauka is mountain, and Makai is the sea. So from the mountains to the ocean is, Basically, it, there's everything we need that provides for us as, as for life, you know, to live, you know, survival, you know, eat. Yeah. And um, so I was blessed enough to do all that. And also being from Oahu, which is more of like, I would say it was all the other islands would say is the more um, city like place, you know. But here is like where it's known for like the um, not just the diversity, but as far as like. There's so many different backgrounds in just one island. It's like a meeting place, you know, Oahu. And it's funny because it's in the middle of all the islands, you know. So I was able to, to, to know and learn how to live, you know, more towards, like, the Western way, you know. Like, there's, you know, grocery shopping, you know. There's, you know, a lot of, like, you know, clothes shopping and, you know, all of this, you know. So I was yeah. blessed enough to live both. But living in Hawaii is just awesome, you know. Like, I... Every, I, I don't know if I can, it's hard to have a bad day here, you know, because of, like, there's so much to appreciate here, you know, it's like the weather, the environment, you know, the, the, just the aloha spirit that's just rooted in here and based from here, you know, like, 
there's still that, you know, around in this world. And what's cool about Hawaii is, like, these islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean are giving out this word, aloha, with so many meanings behind that to the whole world, you know. And that's why a lot of people love coming to Hawaii. It's like, one, it's different from maybe where they came from, but also the vibe you get here, you know. It's, it's so positive, you know. So, so it's the old Hawaiian place. Yeah, I can hear all the passion you have about Hawaii. Do you imagine yourself ever leaving and maybe living somewhere else for a bit? Or are you going <laughs> to stay oh. here forever? And, I mean, I don't know if I would ever leave. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, what do you uh, I mean, I growing up, I always told myself, like, oh, I'm never leaving Hawaii. I'm never going to the mainland. And, you know, <laughs> I'm never going here and here. And it's funny because now, like, Everything I've said, like, I would like, you know, I love going here. I love going to California. I love going to different places, you know, and just exploring. But as far as living, I don't know if I can live anywhere else. But if there was a place that I could live, it would probably be, probably be, like, Tahiti, maybe. That's the closest and the nicest place to Hawaii, in, in my opinion. Yeah. So, yeah. I felt like Tahiti is the, the next stop, like, if I had to live somewhere and, like, Hawaii would disappear, it would be a Tahiti. <laughs> I would live in both places. I'm missing, yeah. like, no wetsuits and just nice warm water. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's, it's all those little things that just makes me not have a bad day. You know, we can just, like, appreciate all that, you know. And that, that's what I love about traveling is, like, you can compare it, you know, and see, like, the difference of it and, you know, and you know what I mean? Just like it makes you appreciate and know more, you know. Like going to Cali, it made me like appreciate back at home the warm water, you know, like the cold water up in Cali. And I'm just like, oh, I'm not used to this. And finally get back home, I'm like, oh, like finally warm water. I need to wear a wetsuit, you know. And it's, it, it's really, it's, I think the experience of it is all like what keeps me going, with what's, what, um, what I love about, you know, being out of Hawaii, you know, it's just, being able to explore and, you know, just the experience, you know, the journey. Um, awesome. One other thing I wanted to bring up, because you talked about, um, and we're going to get to body surfing in a minute, because I know that's what a lot of people want to hear about, but you mentioned about hunting and stuff um, with your cousins, but I saw that you're now vegan. Yeah, <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah, and what made you want to go vegan? Um. So... It was funny because I personally used to, like, make fun of vegetarians and vegans. And it's funny because one of my good friends is actually um, vegetarian. And I was like, how can you do that? You know, like, how can you, like, not eat meat? Everyone eats meat. And, you know, we grew up a whole, especially in Hawaii, that's all. Our, the literally, like, the regular diet, I would say every night, is any meat and rice. That's, like... It's pretty rare to see greens, which is, you know, kind of bummer and sad, but it's just, we don't even, we just care about the taste and just like, it just are like, we grew up with that, you know, so I, you know, I was like, before I, I make fun of these people, I need to be there, I need to be there in their shoes and see how it's like first before I, you know, before, just like anything, like before you, you know, you say bad things about something, you should feel, see how, where they're coming from, the perspective, you know. So my friend was vegetarian. He's from India. And in India, they do not eat beef. I think cows are sacred to them and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to try this, you know. And I tried it. I tried it for, I think it was, what, last year? Right before um, Oceanside, I was, um, like, pescatarian for three months. I was mostly vegetarian, but what made me pescatarian was I would eat. Fish would be, like, my only meat. And... I would eat it like every now and then. So like maybe like once a week or like once every two weeks. But other than that, all the other days, I would just vegetables, fruits, nuts, you know, and almonds, just yeah. everything but meat. <laughs> so I tried it and like, there was just such a huge difference. Like I was like, wow, like I would wake up and like my neck and my back pains like just went away and like I, f- I didn't feel tired like in the morning like you just feel like all sluggish in the morning like I woke up and I was actually like ready to go and I was just like wow you know like it is the food you know like just changing your diet to going vegan and stuff and there's a lot of, like other reasons why I'm vegan too is because um I've been watching documentaries and stuff and 
like Netflix and stuff. Um, and I'm studying like what they do and how they do it and all the things that they do. And coming from a hunter myself, you know, it's like if to me, if like someone should ask me like, you know, should they go vegan? If possible, do it. Try it, you know. Give it a try. And um, so um I was any like black for for trying to go vegan or doing this. Anyone on the island do, giving you any crap about it? Actually, surprisingly, no. Actually, no. Um, probably my family. They're like, oh, like, like in a good way though. They make fun of me. Be like, oh, here, eat this. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, I can't eat that. And they're like, oh, we're just kidding. Like here. Yeah. And like for me, like especially seeing family members and friends like going through a lot of health problems and you know it it it's it kind of you know it, it's a bummer, you know, and it's sad. It's like you know what can I do personally to help change that around, you know, and cut that line of you know that culture we live into, like oh, oh eat me, eat me, eat me, you know, and and same with dairy. I stopped drinking milk, you know, and when you realize where these things come from and you find out that really even the science behind it, that it's not really meant for us, and you start to know more and educate yourself more about it and doing your research, you realize, like, wow, you know, like, wow, like, it's, it's, it's a trip to, like, find out, like, a lot of these things are actually bad for us, you know? And like I said, if you hunt and fish for, for your food, like, you, like, off the land, then so be it, you know, eat it, you know? That's, you're making the most of what you've, you know, what you've worked hard for and stuff, and, like, you farm your own, then you know, eat your own food, you know, that's if you farm it, but, like, as far as, like, like the um, processing and all this, you know, like, the food ain't, the meats ain't the same like it was years ago, you know, before it used to be about providing food for the people, right. and now it seems like it's about making money from the people, you know, it's like, so, and that pretty much changed, uh, it, it just so wonder- changed the whole in your next competitions now let's move on to some body surfing so I know that's yeah. what I want to hear about um, mm-hmm. with your new vegan diet I'm sure you will be in much better shape and so what is mm-hmm. um, some of your training like you know what do you do to stay in shape how many times do you go in the water when you're in the water? Like, going in every day how often do you get out in the water um honestly um because you know being from hawaii you know it's pretty expensive to live here and you know and basically survive here it's like um i I always wish that one day i could just wake up and just like surf whenever i want and be in the ocean whenever i can but because of work stops like my whole morning i can only get in the morning session of in the water at the beach usually like friday saturdays when i'm off from work um, that's the only time that can go in the morning or if I like call off or something. But other than that, I try to go every afternoon if possible, if there's waves, but my training is usually just, um, running on sand, you know, swimming, of course, that's the main one swimming around, you know, especially body surf. You want to stay out as long as you can. Like, even if the waves suck, you know, like you just want to get that swim in that workout and I go to the gym too I do a lot of bicycles um you know stair masters stair steps um and just to keep the body in shape you know keep the body moving um and that's the the diet you know plays a big role in all that too you know um and hunting also is like another um workout for me you know we're marching up the mountains constantly you know and especially when you catch like a pig and stuff and we have to like pack it on our back and it's like it's like piggybacking someone on your back for miles, you know. When it's not that? Miles, yeah. It's, it's, when was the, did you do that recently? Um, actually, no. Unfortunately, the last couple weeks I went, we just caught like really small baby pigs. So, oh, um, I see. I see. yeah, you can't do much with that. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so, like the big pigs. When I do, I will show you guys. But, okay. Yeah. And, uh, so, how did you get into body surfing to start? Um, I got into body surfing about maybe like my sophomore, maybe ending my freshman sophomore year yeah. in high school. So I was about what, like sixteen, around there, and I did not know how to surf at all, like on a board, any board, maybe boogie board, but still, I didn't even know how to surf on that either. So. One um, 
at Waimea Bay, there would, um, right off of the jumping rock, there used to be waves that it would break right off of the rock and kind of make like a nice left off the rock. And we would, you know, as like family and kids and stuff, we would all like kick off the sand and jump into the wave and try and ride it and just mimic the board surfing, you know. And I would do that and we would like be so stoked on that like, as kids. And like um, one year, I went to the Big Island and all I really knew how to do was swim. So I had a pair of like these super old, like kind of ripped up fins that they had and all my cousins were all surfing and they're going on their boards, short board, long board. And I'm the only one that's just in the water just to swim around because like I said, I didn't know how to surf at all. And like just watching them was super cool. And I, I was like, a wave came and it came towards me and then, um, I turned around and I was like, oh, like, you know, I try and kick onto this wave and like act like a board, you know. So I turned around and I kicked you know, um, on the wave and I was actually riding it and I was like, whoa. And it was like a super small wave, but that sparked like, like so something how, in me that made me go, you know, like. Yeah, how far and, did you meet John and the whole Kahanalu group? Yeah, so, and then after that moment, I realized, wow, you know, you can actually surf with no board. And when I came back to Oahu, I started doing that. And then, um, like I said, like, there was, I, there was nobody to, like, there was nobody. I'm the first one in my family to actually do this. And there was nobody that actually, like, taught me, you know, for, like, the first two years of, like, learning how to body surf, you know. And it's always me. And, you know, I finally got my first pair, first pair of kick spins. And I remember just, like, charging my males. And I just got better and better. And I kept doing it. And then eventually I met Sean, I think it was 2014, I believe, was at a Point Panic competition in, um, on the South Shore of Hawaii. And um, I won the, my division. Was, it's funny because there was nobody in that division, but I was just doing whatever pops in my head. And I did like about, I, think, I believe, like six spins on a wave. And Sean was like, whoa, you know, like, who's this, who's this kid, you know? And when I came in shore, Sean was talking to me. And then, like, since then, like, he's like, wow, oh, you know, we all body surf and stuff, you know. And, you know, we should, you know, we should go, you know, together and, you know, we can learn and stuff like that. And he's brought me to a lot of spots since then that I never thought was possible to body surf. And just doing that alone, like, I started to learn more. And the more, you know, I was really observant. So you watch, you know, and see, you see how body surfers do. Like, you would trip out on, like, the littlest techniques and the littlest, like, things that you would do in the water, like, makes a big difference, you know, and that comes with experience, you know, and just watching. Was there watching is like inspired you? I mean, you said you didn't really, you were the only one, no one was teaching you how to do, like, these spins and all these things. What inspired you to start doing that and taking it to the next level? Because I think it's pretty hard to do, you know, you don't have anyone that you're going to do. yeah. I'm like, where you to start like bringing it up to the next level like you have been? Yeah. So those sessions at Waimea Bay, I mean, after I taught myself how to like actually ride the wave and in the barrel, never did any tricks. I was like, okay, I know there's more to it. And like I've seen bodyboarders like do their little thing like off the lip and stuff like that. And I'm like, I wonder what body shopping can do, you know? So um, I think a friend of mine was like, oh, you should try and do a spin. I was like, spin? Like, you mean as in, like, like turn, like, on the wave kind of thing? Like, yeah, like, turn your whole body, do a spin. And, like, my first wave, I just got it down. Like, it was, I know it would probably would have been really funny if we had, like, cameras back in that time. But, oh, like, since then, I was like, wow. And, like, all my friends were, like, stoked out. They're like, bro, how'd you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. I just, like, pictured it in my head <laughs> and, like, mimicked it and just, like, try to do it, you know. And that's the same thing with the front flip, you know, like, when you think of it in your head and you picture it in your mind and you're like, okay, hey, how would that, how can I make that possible? You know, and you think about it and then I'm flipping, you know, you got to know how, how fast you're going to be on a wave, how fast the wave is and you got to beat the wave and, you know, and the sections and the speed you have, like all that plays a role in every move that you do. You know, you don't just spin because you want to spin, you spin with a purpose, you know, like for an example, like, like when you're on a wave and you want to slow down, instead of just like, kind of like, like, Forcing yourself back, do a spin. A spin will, will decrease your speed by a little bit. And that's, that's what can keep you directly in a position where you want to be in a wave, you know, like little stuff like that, you know. And what inspired me more was I started, um, at the time I had a GoPro and Instagram just became a huge thing at the, like the timing. 
And I remember watching different body surfers. And, like, and that's how, when I f- discovered Kanye, Kanye Lee. I had no idea who he was. And he like, was a ripper like, since, like, I believe he said he started body surfing since he was like fourth grade or something. And I had no idea there was so much to body surfing. When I watched him, I was like, whoa. You know, I was like, mind blown. And just since then, and the more contests I did, the more people like, I was seeing from all over the island and the, even the other islands come down for like a contest and like just the inspiration started off there you know the the meeting of all the body surfers at one contest you know so that's what inspired me the most who's your biggest influencer now right now my biggest influence is i really don't have a top big influence but if i could line up the guys that like help have played a role in my life that helped me be a better body surfer would be guys like, you know, of course, Sean, Inoka, Barry, Holt, <clears throat> um, uh, Kai Santos, you know, uh, Mark Cunningham, you know, Mike Stewart. You know, every time I have the opportunity to, like, talk with them, you know, I ask, you know, like, hey, you know, like, how, how do you do this? You know, like, what, 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 what's, like, you know, there's always ask. And if they don't tell me, then it's okay, you know, but, like, um, as far as, like, just ask, it doesn't hurt to ask, you know, like, I'm so, like, I think what keeps me, what made me a better body surfer was I always wanted to find ways to, to be better. I always asked questions. I always, um, any opportunity I get, any chance I get, oh, I would watch, you know, I'd watch really hard and study and, you know, and talk. You know, like I said, you just got to just ask, you know, it doesn't have to ask and if not watch. And um, I think that has helped me be a better body surfer, you know, just watching and asking questions, you know. Is there anyone that you have never body surfed with that would be in your dream party wave? Um, unfortunately, they, they're they not here today, but um would be like Duke Hanamoku. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, as far as today, um, hmm, let me see. I really can't think nothing on top of my head. I haven't got to surf with Steve and you guys yet. <laughs> um on a party wave um that's a good one i know there is um oh, i can't think of nothing on top of my head actually somebody that have inspired me i want to be a party wave even i, but, I guess you might have to go in the summer <laughs> yeah <laughs> um charity competition we'll go. yeah go out um yeah. and then so is there any recent highlights for many of your um recent competitions that you've been in? I don't know. What's your most recent? Was it last summer? Um, um, competitions that you've been in? Most, most recent memory? Or like... Or highlights from the oh, highlight, highlight. What's like okay. the highlights from the competition? Mm, I think it was the Huntington Beach one that we just had. Um, that contest caught me off guard. I had no idea there was a Huntington Beach contest. Like, when I, I was only thinking about Oceanside because last year, that's all we came up for was surf the waves with all the boys and Oceanside. And Kinui did not tell me about Huntington Beach. There was going to be a contest, a handboarding and a body surfing. And when I got there, I had no like, intention of like, handboarding at the time, too. And I, I didn't even have my handboard, you know. And um, just so happened, um, Kinui was like, yeah, we got a contest tomorrow at Huntington Beach. I'm like, What? <laughs> Huntington Beach, what are you talking about? He said, Yeah, there's a body surf and a handboarding. I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> Caught me off guard. And, you know, the most, I feel like in life, it's like the most unexpected um, plans and happenings are usually turn out to be like some of the best, you know. And I've been mean, fortunate that I, you know, I was able to actually do very well in that contest, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, reading the waves and like, okay, the bullet would be perfect for this, you know. And then, oh, this, um, you know, and, this time of day, like the waves are breaking outside, so I think the wedge would be perfect for it, you know. And just I was able to use both boards, you know, and actually be out there and, and catch waves with it, you know, and use it. And it's like, oh, you know, like it made me want to, like, okay, I need to start like handboarding more because this caught me off guard. And that's just funny because usually, like, growing up, I wasn't really into handboarding, and it does help. Like, handboarding does help. And I always felt like, you know, I'd rather feel more pure, but. There's times when, like, handboarding would make your session so much better, you know. Like, I would have made it out of that wave, that in and out. I would have, you know, rode this wave longer if I had a handboard. You know, like, that extra edge, like, you know, that 
the weapon, you know, to use for all these waves, you know, could have made my session so much better if I had a handboard. And that's why, like, so handboarding. When do, you, um, when do you choose to use a handboard and when do you choose not to? Like, what what kind of waves do you choose a, a board to use and when not to? Um, It depends on the, the just like how you do it, anything else, the swell size, you know, how the waves are breaking, how the, you know, the shape of the wave, you know, how it's looking and um, just observe before you jump in. And I'm like, oh, I think a handboard would be perfect for today because of the barrel ride. It can actually, you know, make it out faster. And I'm, I kind of like mind surf it. And I'm looking, I'm watching these waves. I'm like, okay, that's a huge wave. Like, I don't think I'm going to bring a handboard out today because, you know, like just the wave is so huge, you know, and like, I don't want to be like whacking my head or something, you know, like stuff like that. You know, it's dangerous, you know, already just being out there without a handboard. So like, that's one less thing to worry about. You know, like if the waves were like, I'm talking like huge as in like eight to 10 feet Hawaiian scale. So that would be like in scale of how other people would measure it would be like 10 to 20 feet faces, you know. And those days I'm like, oh, like if it's a big um, pounding shore break, yeah, definitely no handboard. But if there's like a ride to it, like you, like you have, you got like big waves like wedge or pipeline or quite panics, the handboard is like perfect for those conditions, you know. And you want to actually ride the wave as for as long as you can and as basically and as fast as you can. <laughs> What's so, yeah, your board like, of choice? Um, it de- like I said, it depends where I'm at surfing, but yeah. most of the time would usually be the bulla. The bulla, definitely the bulla. And your fins of choice? Of course, the fins. <laughs> Any special color? What's your colorway that you like that you're rocking right now? Um, right now is it's actually the I had the the um the green camel, the Zakis, and then I had the blue camel. Um, sorry, the blue Zakis, and now um I'm using the red and black Zakis. <laughs> well. And then lastly, before we have to go, what are your um, predictions for the future of body surfing and handboarding? Um, you know, where do you see it going? I mean, I think you're you're the first or one of the first um, body surfers sponsored by Ruka. Is, are, do they sponsor any other um, body surfers? No. <laughs> no. That's pretty amazing. I think I'm the first and only so far. So where far. do you? you know with that being said where do you see the sport going and you've seen it develop in the past uh you know however how many years have you been you know since you're 16 how old are you now 22 okay so it's about what six seven years okay. now <laughs> it's gonna there. 30 seconds so you have where do you see it going before we go i see it um going big going worldwide you know from you know, body surfing is definitely growing, you know, and you got uh, handboard companies like you guys, you know, and big sponsorships like Ruka, like just, just that alone will help build the sport. And, you know, now that I'm traveling now to body surf, you know, and like that alone, I can also spread, you know, the knowledge of Kanalu and body surfing even more, you know, and no matter where I go, you know, body surfing will always be with me and I can also to, like show that to the world, you know, with the help from you guys and, you know, I'm blessed enough to, to have that opportunity and I see it going very far. Like I'm hoping one day, like it'll be in the Olympics. <laughs> go. All right. <laughs> go for body surfing Olympics in 2022. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, at Mahalo Kali on Instagram and we'll see everyone soon. Thanks for uh, talking with us. It'd be great. Aloha. <laughs> Bye. Bye.